switches and all that stuff. But that's that's your cycle by cycle. Now let's go to average. And in average case, you have uh, let's switch it to a new window, and we want to look at the output. So that's your output. And then we can look at the That's your current. This could be uh, there, is, there is a small reverse switching current. You should get switching. Well, yeah, 100 kilohertz switching. There's 100 kilohertz switching, a very little ripple. So if you look at the PWM, I think that magnitude should be there. Because the transistor is getting shorted, no? that current magnitude will be very appreciated. Mm -hmm. This is definitely used to the next one, right? We can look at continuous or so we should get that. Let's see. Correct. So if I go you see the most Great dive signal, 0 to 5 volts, right? And we can go to 0 0.1. That's a good ratio. Well, let's look at so we on this is add plot, and we go here and we can look at the switch voltage. That's your switch voltage, right? Now let's look at. Sorry. So we add the third window, and it's okay. Let's look at the inductor current. That's an input current too, right? I have to see. This is the steady state. That's a ripple. You can see some ripple going on in there. This is a continuous current, right? Hard to see any appreciable ripple. But I think this L is one milliamp. You are 100 kilohertz. Uh, 100 kilohertz. Uh, uh, if it is one milliamp, then it is quite high. Yeah, 100 kilohertz. If we reduce it, then we will see some more. So there is some 20 volts. 20 volts. Yeah. And it's, it's quite small. It's uh, of the order of uh, almost 200 milliamps or so. Okay. So this is your boost, and we have seen, uh, let's see. Seen the average, and we have seen uh, this is the average, and this is the switching. Okay. It's okay. All right. Now, uh, let's see. So let's try to finish in an hour. So we have DC DC converter. Let's make sure we cover. So boost converter we have gone through, 
and then we have the buck boost. So you have again the buck boost, the steady state transfer ratio is d by one minus d. It's also non-linear. And uh, here, when d is one, it becomes uh, essentially infinite. And when d is zero, it's zero. So this guy starts from zero. So you basically have something like this, okay? And uh, and in the discontinuous conduction mode. You go through the discontinuous conduction mode, the same logic applies, and uh, you come out with uh, uh, because in the buck boost the polarity reverses, uh, but you can see that this is a linear, uh, so this becomes a linear uh, transfer ratio compared to the compared to uh, compared to buck. Uh, so and 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 uh, continuous conduction mode. So in the continuous conduction mode, you had non-linear, non non and then in the discontinuous conduction mode, you have linear connected states. The point is, then m is uh, dependent on the load term. Linearity exists between m and d, and for a given unicycle, m can be larger for DCM. Right. So those are the things which apply to all of these topologies. What was the basic schematic for the buck boost? Ah. So let's, why don't we look at, right here, that's your, that's your basic schematic, right? Now, so here, you're, uh, just like the buck, your input current is discontinuous, right? The boost is the only one where you can have actually continuous input current. So here, that's why the boost is used for power factor connection. But the switch, the switch here chops the input current. Okay, so uh, uh, the boost, you have inducted the front end, so your current is never discontinuous. Here you have a discontinuous input current. And the way it works is when you turn it on, essentially you build you build the energy into this inductor, and when you turn it off, uh, this inductor will build the energy uh, back here. Okay, and this actually capacitor is connected in reverse, so your voltage is negative here. If this is your ground, this voltage is negative. Right. So. So in the buck boost. Similar equations to go through all the uh, discontinuous waveforms and determine the value of R critical and L critical. And then here are some simulation results. Here we have got L of 2 millihenry and uh, C of 20 microfarad and R of 20 ohms. And uh, we have a switching frequency of 100 kilohertz. So if you do that, we basically have minus 40, about minus 40 volts. And uh, this is by cycle by cycle. And this is your inductor current. And then in the average switching, you have similar results. And let's pull up the buck boost. Here also it's important how the average switch is hooked up, and this is your average switch. Okay, so we have. cycle by cycle first. So cycle by cycle, we had half 0.5 unit cycle. And uh, Okay, 
Okay, that's your voltage. Input is Cycle by cycle, so half a degree cycle, and uh, we'll do the same thing. And our input is 40. Plot. We have 
have two inductors and also plug by other shape. This average model, I guess that the values of the inductor and the capacitor should not make any difference at all. That's correct. That is correct. Yeah, you're just trying to eliminate, see it's very similar to what we did in the DC, pressure DC motor, in the sense that we replaced the switches, the inverter, with the large signal model. Here, uh, you're doing the same thing at, at a little bit more complex level. But even you can add parasitics to it and uh, and you can still use the same uh, average switch model. So let's look at uh, I am four. 